Hello gamers, Mage Hammer here for another edition of tonight on Mage Hammer's Game Table. And tonight we have my Tiny D6, Tiny Cthulhu with the Tiny Pulp Rules variant, which is in this core rulebook here. Solo RPG session. I'm using this excellent side quest deck, Pulp Adventures, from Inkwell Ideas to generate the scenarios that I play in each of these episodes. And... Um, it's worked out really well. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to go over the rules necessarily, but I will let you know that I'm using the dramatic knockout rules from Tiny Pulp, where if the heroes roll a five or six on a standard or advantage test, they have a dramatic knockout on their target. Uh, grit. Uh, I use a slightly modified grit. That's kind of one of my only house rule, really. Grit gives you a rerolled failed test. Uh, the reroll is made with disadvantage. I don't have the reroll made with disadvantage. I just give them the reroll because it's it's a heroic game, and I feel that that's more heroic. Uh, also, I can spend two grit to allow them. The character can spend two grit to heal one d three hit points, or they can use three grit to have an attack miss them. And each hero begins with three grit, which are symbolized by those savage world bennies. All right, so. Uh, and once again, to be clear, these rules are printed out of a PDF of this book. So our heroes are the Intrepid Society. It's a organization I invented for my fiction as well as my RPGs when I play Pulp. And my three main characters are Dr. Alistair Wickham. He's the leader and the founder of the Intrepid Society. His protege is Xander Chance. Uh, he hired his Xander to go be an explorer for him. And over time, they became fast friends. And now Xander works for Alistair with partners, probably a stronger word. And then Dr. Tessa Stewart was one of Dr. Alistair Wickham's grad students. And she showed such promise that he took her into the Intrepid Society as a member. So she's a full-fledged member as well. And she is a pilot and can fly if she needs to. Um, so I'm marking their hit points here. Dr. Wickham has six hit points. Dr. Stewart has eight. And Xander Chance has nine. And these are the dice they'll be rolling. These are the enemy's dice up here. Um, so we'll see what adventure the, the Intrepid Society, but uh, a small note. I have taken the criticism from, not criticism, feedback. <laughs> feedback from the comments section on one of my, on my second video, I think it was, about the dice getting a little chaotic here and maybe bumping, you know. So I, I decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to roll all the dice down in this area here. So, like, I'm going to make this kind of my dice area and hope that I don't lose a lot of them onto the floor. But my cat Coco is here, and I'm sure Coco will take care of that for me and knock it further across the room if I reach down to get it. Anyway, so, uh, just want to let the, see how that's going to work out. I haven't play tested This is my dice area. I'm trying to give myself as much room as possible while staying on camera. Uh, so, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I'm trying to minimize the collateral, you know, damage there so we'll see how that plays all right so without further ado let's get into our handy oh ooh, another side note i did not at the end of the adventure award experience points so i did as soon as i turned off the camera they received two experience points for last mission and and so they are at eight experience points at 10 experience points they each get to choose spend 10 experience points to do a new trait at six they could have spent uh to get a more hit points or they could have at eight spent to get proficient in another weapon group or something like that but i think getting a trait at this point is more valuable so they're all saving up for 10 experience points before they do that and they will probably reach that 10 experience points tonight so let's open up our side quest deck we have already done cards 26 68 and 51 so let's see where we're going to go in the world tonight so that's 52 we have not done 52 let's see if we like it each card has a number in the top right hand corner uh, obviously that's what I'm searching for currently uh, if you watched the first episode of this series you know that I had kind of a 52 card pickup uh, event and I never really went back and organized them back in the correct order so each one of these searches is a crapshoot almost literally what what 50 well, there's 50 53 and 54 what happened to 52 
though. I didn't use 52, did I? No. Oh. Huh. Maybe, maybe 52 <laughs> got lost somewhere down in my basement <laughs> and I didn't retrieve it. Maybe it got lost under some laundry. I don't know. Uh, let's let's see here. 52. I may have to re-roll. Oh, there it is. I already did 52. Uh, huh. So what's 51? That was that was last week. So 52 is two weeks before. Maybe I didn't record it. That was the first one. What is? Huh. Sorry, folks. I'm having a little bit of a technical difficulty here. I can't seem to. I must have recorded the number wrong. Let's see what. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I did. I did record that wrong. That wasn't this. This was actually. 52, not 68. Wow, I don't know how I made that mistake. Must have looked at the wrong card at the wrong time. All right, well, let's roll again. 53, I guess I'm going 51, 52, 53. Okay, that's cool. I know 53 is back here. Let's see if we like it. Dun, 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 dun. doesn't sound that exciting. I'm going to re-roll. I'm not feeling it. So let's do that. Ooh, let's see what that sounds promising. Okay. All right, okay. Ooh, oh, that's gonna be exciting. All right. All right, we'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go with uh, Adventure 14. No Pixies. Um, so, put the rest of these cards away before I, they all end up all over the floor. And we're going to get right to it. Okay, so, the name of this adventure is Mirror Image. Um... So, Dr. Wickham and Dr. Stewart and Xander are all uh, hanging out at Dr. Wickham's mansion, which is also the headquarters of the Intrepid Society, when a messenger comes to the door. It's the afternoon. And Dr. Wickham's butler comes forward and announces, You have a visitor, sir. Uh, well, who, who is it? It is the Honorable Kurosawa, Kurosawa Mojo. I better make a note of that or I'm going to forget it. Kurosawa, Sawa, Kurosawa Mojo. Oh, Kurosawa, show him in, show him in. And he goes over uh, a... a a Japanese gentleman enters, gives uh, Dr. Wickham a bow. Uh, Dr. Wickham returns the bow. Please, come in, have a seat. Uh, some tea, please. And so his butler runs off to get some tea. And, um... Kurosawa, uh, let me introduce to you, uh... Dr. Stewart and Mr. Xander Chance. Uh, my colleagues. Yes. Hello. I am Kurosawa Mojo. I'm pleased to meet both of you. He gives each of them a slight bow. Dr. Stewart bows properly. Xander kind of nods and awkwardly moves his body. Please, please, have a seat. So Kurosawa takes a seat. And he says, So what do, what do I owe this pleasure, Kurosawa? I do hope you forgive me for coming in unannounced. Uh, but uh, a particular 
event has happened that I think you may be interested in and actually my client needs help with. Oh, this sounds very intriguing. Yeah, it sounds like danger to me. Well, danger's your middle name, Xander. Proceed, Kiyosawa. Yes, well, <clears throat> there have been um, a chamber. Well, let me begin to start at the beginning. Uh, you know of the Unaguni Monument? Yes. Oh, yes, of course. And Dr. Stewart says, yes, yes, I've heard of that. Yes, well, um, there has been a chamber discovered that there is uh, writing was found that gave the location of the Yata no Kagami mirror. Um, and we are very, in, my client is very interested in getting hold of the mirror before the Japanese government does. Oh, well, that's kind of a diplomatic mess, wouldn't it be? Uh, yes, uh, but you see, my client is also part of the Japanese government, and he wants us as discreet as possible. That's why we're not using Japanese agents, and why I have come to you, because I believe you are the people, the intrepid society of the people for the job. Hmm. And then Dr. Stewart says, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, Yonaguni Monument is under the ocean, correct? Yes, that is correct, my lady, uh, yes. And uh, so you would need to get a boat. Uh, I could provide you with um, as many papers as you might need to slip by some of the Japanese government, but uh, preferably there would be no contact with anyone as you make your way there. Xander says, oh, looks like I'm gonna be doing some diving. Yes, my good man, yes, you will be. I have, uh, we will also have to hire, uh, we'll have to hire a underwater pressure suit. Actually, make that two, Dr. Stewart says. What? Dr. Stewart says, I read and speak Japanese. You, Xander, do not. But, however, I do understand the prudence of bringing you with me down at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. All right. Whatever. So, it sounds like you are going to take the job? Well, yes, of course we are. Um, so, once we find the where the location is, I assume you would like us to go after the mirror in its new location. Is that correct? Yes, uh, and as you know, the mirror supposedly is located in the Issei Grand Shrine. However, that can't be right if it truly is somewhere else. Yes, that is complicated, is it not? Hmm. So, let me get this straight. So, the Yata no Kagami mirror that is on display is not the real mirror. New information has come to light that the mirror, the real mirror, is located somewhere else, and that location, supposedly, is written on this chamber wall. Yes, that's about the sum of it. So, if y people know that the location is written on the wall, how do they know well, you see, <clears throat> that's a bit delicate. Uh, the people that discovered the chamber uh, managed to get the information to people in the government and then disappeared before that information was released to the public. But my client, being a member of the government, got that information. So as of right now, the Chinese government, or the Japanese government is, is uh, my government is not quite, hmm, moving on it, shall we say, or if they are, they're moving slowly, and you would need to move with most haste. Because the mirror cannot fall into the wrong hands. Ah, I see. Very, very, very delicate. You are right, Kiyosawa. Well, I think we will need to get started. Um, so I'm going to go take care of getting a hold of the boat in the and the arrangements for that. Uh, Dr. Stuart Zander, I need you to research as much as you can about the mirror and this new location that Kurosawa is going to give us. Kurosawa, we will leave within a couple of days. 
if we can, hopefully as soon as we can, get there, find out where it is, uh, and make our way to the real mirror before the Japanese government. That is about the size of it, my old friend. Well, Kurosawa, it's been wonderful. So please stay for tea, and then we'll get right on it. Oh, thank you. So the butler brings the tea. They drink the tea. Kurosawa has a very pleasant uh, visit, and then he makes his way out into the afternoon sun, the rare afternoon London sun, by the way. And we move into the next phase. So Dr. Stewart goes into Wickham's private library and doesn't really find too much that she needs, so she has to go to the the Royal Library, and she does some research. So she is educated, so she's going to get... Okay, so she easily does proper research on the mirror. And... knows that the mirror used to belong to Japanese royalty and that it is a national treasure and and learns what she can all about it and teaches Xander what he needs to know. Let's make sure see if he... And he is able to kind of grok what she's saying and lock it away in his memory. I'm not rolling the dice where I said it was going to. I'm going to try to be better. Okay, so Dr. Wickham has um, solidified the boat and the diving gear and whatever supplies they are going to need. And they leave from, well, what part of London or England would they leave from? Uh, Brighton, maybe? Sure. They make their way to Brighton by train, and they get on the boat, and they travel to the island. Now, so, um, now, their pilot, uh, the boat pilot, is a Japanese gentleman, and what they've gotten is uh, they are posing as a research, research, boat from the uh, from Cambridge University and so they're hoping they don't run into anything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly see if they happen to run into a Japanese boat um, and what I'm going to do is Dr. Wickham has talked to the pilot and told him that they are trying to avoid the authorities and that he is being well paid for the for that and so I'm going to roll to see I'm going to roll a test for the pilot to see if he can avoid the government patrol boats. So I'm giving him advantage because this is his thing. <laughs> and he fails. So guess what? <laughs> they are going to be approached by a Japanese patrol ship, <clears throat> military. And so they pull up alongside and there's a megaphone going saying, pull over or, or engines to stop and prepare to be boarded. And so the pilot's like, do you want me to run, doctor? Or, no, no, that would be too suspicious. I, 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 I'm, I'm confident that our cover will hold up and our papers are good. All right. So the pilot stops the boat. Uh, three Japanese officers, uh, the, the XO and um, a couple of sailors come aboard the boat. And they're very polite about it, doing some bowing and asking permission to come aboard the boat, even though they know for sure they're going to be coming on that boat anyway. And he says, hello, I'm Commander uh, Hoso, and I would require to see your papers. And so Dr. Wickham, of course, knows the drill, so he brings out his, his papers and shows them everything that they need to see. And... They are, uh, my cat is seeing something. <laughs> I'm hoping it's not something that I need to take care of. All right, sorry, I'm distracted. So Hoso says, uh, let me see your papers. So we're going to take a look at the papers. We're going to make a check to see if the papers were good enough. And they are. We roll a success. Fives or sixes are successes. And so... So the, he goes, hmm, research, eh? Yes, yes, uh, we are researching the uh, these waters and their possible link to various uh, ships of old. And it's all very boring stuff, uh, but it's stuff that our, our research really needs to fill in some holes as far as, you know, shipping lanes and so forth and so on. Hmm. 
Well, these waters are off limits to foreigners, despite your academic. Oh, well, that's just, that's just disappointing. Uh, we're, we're only here doing some quick, uh, we, we won't be more than two days. So we're going to see if he can, he's insightful, so we're going to see if he can persuade and, and no. <laughs> so I don't know if I should have him re-roll that or if, yeah, I'm going to have him re-roll. I'm going to spend a grit. Okay, so he's successful and he ends up persuading the officer with a bribe. And so the officer says, well, welcome to Japan. And he and his men go and get into their, uh, back on their ship, say, two days, and if we see you here beyond that, we will sink your ship. Oh, how pleasant. Uh, very well. I assure you, we won't be long. So the ship, the, the boat pulls away, and they make their way to the dive site. Uh, it's getting late in the day, but they decide, then, so they decide to spend the night here. And they should be okay going where they need to go. So they're going to spend the night and there will the night will pass uneventfully. And in the morning, they're going to dive. So here they go. All right, so Xander and Dr. Stewart get rigged up in the, you know, those good old-fashioned huge diving suits. You know, the big, big bell helmet with the clear faceplate and, you know, the real heavy uh, suit. And the air hoses, two of them running up. The pilot and Dr. Wickham help them get into them. They secure them, make sure everything's in place, and send them down. Uh, I am going to roll uh, with advantage to see if Dr. Wickham secures Xander's suit well. And he does. And then I'm going to roll with advantage to see if the pilot secures his well. And he does, Dr. Stewart. So it appears as if we're not going to have any issues with their suits on their way down to the dive site. So they make their way down to the dive site. And apparently they were a little too early in the day because as they make their way down to the site, Xander sees some movement. We got movement. I think it's shark. And so a shark is heading their direction. And for the heck of it, I want to see if I... like I have these cool tiny dungeon monster cards. And it's pretty much the same system. And I want to see if there's a shark in here. I can't remember if there's a shark in this or not. So... If not... The great thing about Tiny D6 is, is I can pretty much make the shark up on the spot. I'm going to have the shark be able to attack and swim away if it needs to, like hit and run almost as if it were flying. And it's going to have advantage with attacks underwater because that's where it lives. Uh, Xander, um, he's a survivalist, so I'm going to give him, he's going to have, he's going to be able to attack with his uh, machete um, with advantage but dr stewart she's gonna have a harpoon gun which is ranged so she's gonna make a standard test she's not mastered so she won't make uh it with that and she'll be able to fire it underwater since it is designed to be fired underwater so that's the ruling that's how we're gonna play this and the shark comes her way we're gonna roll initiative dr wickham doesn't know what's going on i did not roll my dice down here i'm gonna get better people but they both go if they roll a success a five or a six they go before the opponent and in this case it is a shark it is a rather large shark so i'm going to give it a decent amount of hit points and it's going to do two damage when it bites and then if it manages to land a blow on one of them and they lose hit points that's going to damage their suit as well, and then that'll cause a whole other problem. And then not only that, it may draw blood, and that may draw more sharks, and I'll roll randomly to see if they start coming. So we're going to have to see how this goes. So Dr. Stewart is going to fire off her harpoon gun. She misses, but she wants to hit, so she's going to spend a grit. And she hits. Uh, harpoon gun is only going to do one damage. Then... Um, Xander is going to wait till it gets close and then he's going to swipe out with his machete. 
And oof, not quite a dramatic knockout, but he does damage. The shark is gonna attack Xander. It has advantage, it swam, and now it's gonna attack. So it only gets, those are its actions. And it does strike Xander. Xander, however, is gonna use all three of his grit points to make sure that that hit does not land. That's a very risky proposition, but we're gonna do it. Now, we roll initiative. The shark swims away a bit, and he's about to make his way back. Oh man, good. So they attack again. She fires off her harpoon gun. Oh, missed completely. She's gonna spend a grit and shoot again. Oh wait, she's only rolling two dice. And she rolls a five, or five and six on both of these. She has a dramatic knockout, which is interesting rule. I'll have to take a look, yeah. Show five or six on her face. Yeah, because it's just heroic, so I guess that's fine. So uh, she hits. So another harpoon smacks into the shark as it spins around and comes towards Xander. It's about to bite Xander again. Xander takes a swipe at it with his machete. And he misses. He has no grit to make the reroll. And the shark attacks him. And the shark hits. So that's two damage. And uh, we're going to roll to see if um, on a five or a six, it's a, it's a wound bad enough for blood and the suit being ripped. Otherwise, it was like a blunt blow with its, as it tried to bite him, it bunched him with his nose. And unfortunately, <laughs> it is. Okay, so his suit is ripped, so that's gonna start causing some problems. And also, the blood may start to attract, in a few rounds, uh, other creatures. So, um, right now, uh, let's do a countdown. Uh, let's say it's gonna take eight rounds for his oxygen to start really becoming a problem. And I'll put, do that with that die there. All right, so they're gonna roll initiative. The shark swims away. All right, they both go before the shark. All right, so Dr. Stewart fires off her gun, hits it. Oh, she's only rolling, I'm just gonna say that's one, okay. and. She is going, see the harpoon she has to reload. She can't take like two attacks out of nowhere. So she hits it once. So you know what? I probably should make that a heavy weapon, but I'm not. It's just a complicated weapon. And then she reloads. That's her other action. Uh, Xander, of course, waits till it gets close. And takes a swipe out of his machete. Hits it again. The shark is pretty messed up. Um, but the shark is now getting to a point where it's starting to get some bloodlust. So... Uh, he attacks Xander, swims at him and attacks, hits him again, darn it. And, uh, well, we already have that issue going on, so we don't have to worry about that. And that brings us to seven rounds now before his oxygen becomes a problem. <sighs> Initiative. All right, they both go before the fish. Shark or fish, right? Right? I think so. So Dr. Stewart fires off her harpoon gun and misses, going to spend a grit to re-roll that test. And hits, doesn't quite knock it out, but definitely hits it. And reloads. Xander swipes at it as the shark comes close to him. He's starting to get a little freaked out by the shark. Doesn't knock it out, but damages it. Clipping away, clipping away. And the shark attacks him. And hits him. <laughs> <laughs> this shark really has his number. All right, and so that brings us down to six rounds before his oxygen becomes a problem. And now at this point, uh, one more round, I'm gonna roll to see if more sharks appear. So we roll some initiative, fives or sixes to go before the shark. And they both go in before the shark. That's very valuable. All right, hoping for a dramatic knockout with this harpoon gun. No, it's a complete miss. Xander with his machete. Oh, well, he got a wound in, but not enough to knock it out. And it, of course, attacks him and actually hits him. Man, he's been hitting him every time. That brings us down to five rounds before his oxygen becomes a problem. And now I'm going to roll to see if it attracts more sharks. And it does not. We got a three. Five or six brings sharks. And so we're going to roll initiative. Oh, Dr. Stewart, neither of them are going to go before the shark. So the shark gets another attack on our boy Xander and hits Xander again. 
Sanders in trouble. Trouble, trouble. And uh, Dr. Stewart. Don't touch it, Coco. Don't touch it. Good kitten. All right, so she's going to fire off, and she hits. And Xander takes a swipe at it as it tries to swim away from him with his machete. And he hits, and the shark has had enough and starts to float belly up. Xander yanks on his on his air hose because he sees the bubbles flying out and they start pulling him upwards. But Dr. Stewart, she's heading down by herself. Okay, so she makes her way down to the ruin and based on her research that she's done, she knows exactly where to look, the research that we did previously. And she... She knows that there's she would there was some kind of test that she had to pass to make her way into the ruin. And so once she gets down there, she realizes that it's a puzzle of some sort. Let's see if she makes a check to know what kind of puzzle. Yes. So she's able to figure out that it's a she understands the puzzle and what she needs to do. Now she has to solve it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say she has to get three successes before she gets three failures. She's gonna have advantage on this uh, role because she did her research beforehand. And so she has to get three successes before three failures to make sure that she can open the chamber. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. And then I'm gonna roll each, I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna roll each time and she tests to see if another shark comes flying by. Okay, so she makes her first success, no shark. She's moving the blocks around, very difficult under the water and in her suit, but she's making it happen. She's, she's figuring out the puzzle. Two successes, two successes so far. And she sees a form swimming above her, coming to see what all the trouble's about. And she moves the final block and moves it into place and a door opens up and another form appears and they start to feed on the other shark. And she, she slips into the chamber. The door is open, however, and there are sharks in the water. So she makes she tries to focus herself on the mission at hand and not worry about the sharks. And now that she's inside the chamber, she feels much better about it. So she is, she goes, she searches around inside the, inside the ruins and she finds the chamber, she's in the chamber and she makes her way to the wall where the writing is. It's, it's old Japanese, and but she thinks that she, she should be able to translate it no problem because she speaks Japanese. But since it's so old, there may be some things she has to suss out. So I'm just gonna give her one test with advantage because she's educated. And she makes that test no problem with the six right there. And she's able to read the location. She commits that to memory. And she has found the location of the real one. And so now the hard part is going to be getting up. So she goes over and she, she comes out having memorized the location. She yanks on the hose and they pull her up as quickly as they can. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll to see if the sharks take notice of her or if they just continue to feast on the other shark and whatever else they find here. So uh, I'm going to roll these three dice, but it's not a test. It's Well, technically, it's three tests at disadvantage each. Any fives or sixes, she draws their attention. All right, so she makes it almost all the way up, and then one of the sharks starts to move towards her and it takes a, a, a snap at her and it hits her and she takes one point of damage just as they yank her out of the water. But she takes one damage and her suit is ripped. Do you have it? Do you have it, Dr. Stewart? Yes. Yes, she takes off the helmet. Yes, the pilot helps her with it. And then, yes. How's Xander? How's Xander? Ugh, I'll live. They, his wounds are bound up. He's he's got one hit point back, but he's still pretty he's pretty messed up. And, and says to the pilot, "Well, Hoso, or well, well, sir, get us out of here." And so the pilot turns and he goes, "So, where is it located?" And she says, "You'll never believe it." No, no, tell me. Stonehenge. What? What is a Japanese mirror doing in Stonehenge? I don't know. 
from what I could make out from the writings, it says it's the it's the calendar built by the Druids in the Isle of Britain. And so, of the Britons. That's got to be Stonehenge. And then not only that, um, they said it was taken there to be far out of the grasp of the usurper, who must be some, you know, Japanese person trying to take out their king. Anyway, so that is what I have sussed out. Well, I've been to Stonehenge so many times. Is there any other indication of where it might be? Yes, it is underneath um, the Eastern Menhir, right at the base of the Eastern Menhir, about six, two, two meters down, six feet down. Oh, fascinating. All right, well, back to England. And so they make their trip back to England without event. Uh, he sends a encrypted telegram to Kurosawa, letting him know that they've found the location. And um, so they make their way to Stonehenge. And they, uh, they go in the twilight when there's not a lot of people there. I don't believe in the 1920s Stonehenge was a completely popular tourist attraction. I don't really know. So in my world, it is still kind of off limits. But it's not guarded or anything. So they're going to make their way to the location. And then just as they... They have Xander Dig, of course. By the way, their their hit points are fully recovered. It's been several weeks of travel and research and so forth. And I'm going to refresh two grit points each at this point. So they dig, they dig, they dig, and then they finally find a uh, a wooden box with Japanese writing on it. And Xander. And uh, Dr. Stewart pulling on up onto the earth. And then they hear, thank you for doing all that work. We will take the mirror now. And they turn around and there are five Japanese looking men, Japanese men. Oh, it's like one woman and one man. Uh, four men and one woman. And the man says, yes, we will take that now. And they have, um, they have guns, submachine guns, and the two red dice have pistols. So the th those guys there, and those guys there. And Dr. Works is like, well, you know, I'm afraid I cannot do that. And I assume that you are Japanese government. Well, you assume correctly, uh, but, well, the fact that you're on English soil, this is an act of aggression. Yes, but no one's going to know we were here. Get them. And so the three move forward and they unleash with their submachine guns. Now, I th let me double check to see if there's rules for submachine guns. I, can't, I honestly can't remember. Light range, hold one hand, pistols, throwing knives, and more. Heavy range weapons. Heavy range weapons are rifles, shotguns, crossbows, and longbows. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to say that the submachine guns, they will fire submachine guns and will consider them heavy weapons. So they basically get one attack, and if they hit, they do two damage. I think that's the easiest way to do it. And then the pistols will be, you know, the usual light range weapons. These guys are just proficient with their submachine guns, and I'm going to make the two leaders uh, mastered in their pistols. So, it's initiative. All right, so Dr. Wickham is going after the Japanese agents, Dr. Stewart before, and Xander after. So, Dr. Stewart um, fires her pistol at the man leader, the guy who was doing all the talking. And she gets one hit. And she takes another shot. And she hits him, but not enough to knock him out. So. That's her attack. Um, 
now they attack. They unleash their... We'll do the two, two submachine guns going at Dr. Wickham, one submachine gun going at Dr. Stewart. So Dr. Wickham's first. Oh, he's hit. And it's a heavy weapon. And the other guy shoots at him and hits. <laughs> Dr. Wickham may not be long for this world. Or at least consciousness. Uh, and then the attack on Dr. Stewart misses. And then pistol... The woman moves forward to try to get to the mirror. The man takes a shot at Dr. Stewart. And he hits. She takes a point. And now uh, Xander climbs out of the hole and springs at the woman and takes a swipe at her, trying to keep her away from the mirror. And he misses. He's not spending grit on that. But he's in combat with her. All right, um... And then Dr. Wickham, he takes a, he whips out his pistol. Uh, he's going to take the evade action and take a shot at the man leader, male leader. Got, hits him. Does another point. But he also is taking the evade action, which if he gets hit again, he will be able to roll that. All right, so we'll roll initiative. Oh, my goodness. So only Xander is going before the enemies. Xander takes a swipe at the woman again. Hits her. And does a backslash. Trying to keep her away from that mirror. Hits her again. She's back on her heel. Um, and now she'll attack back. She whips out a sword. And she is not mastered in it. But she is proficient. So strangely enough. So he takes a point of damage. Swipe. And she seems to be very nimble on her feet, and that's making Xander a bit wary of this foe. It's probably going to be a lot more than uh, than he had bargained for. Or no, he's not underestimating her. Let's put it that way. All right, so now um, they attack. Um, so two of them fire at Dr. Wickham. Hits. He's going to see if he can evade. He does. Second one. Misses. The leader takes a shot at Mr. Wickham, Dr. Wickham, and hits Dr. Wickham. Does not evade. I'm going to count that as a test and have him spend a grit. And still doesn't do it, but that's only one damage because it's a pistol. So he's winged. Ugh. And then this one takes a shot at Dr. Stewart. And, is, and misses her bullet spray and then um she already swiped with her sword so we're gonna go to dr stewart is gonna fire at the leader again and hits and she's trying to decide whether she should evade or she's just gonna attack she fires again oh tried for a dramatic knockout didn't get it but she did wing him and so now dr wickham takes a shot at him And I'm going to spend his final grip point. I'm going to regret that. I know it. And he gets it. And he takes the man down. So the leader goes down. And now it's initiative. So the leader is down. The men get a little squirrely. But they know they still outnumber them. And they have a mission to do. And I believe in the past, the Japanese folks have... A, have a reputation for being very uh, determined. So, uh, let's go to initiative. All right. So, Dr. Stewart goes after, but Xander and Dr. Wickham go before. All right. So, Dr. Wickham is going to... Um, he's going to take cover. He's going to fire once... And then get out of the line. Well, they'll just move and shoot at him. So he's going to take the evade action. So he's going to fire off at one of the submachine guys. Hits one. And then he's going to go take the evade action. Xander takes a swipe at the woman. Hits. And takes another swipe. Sword fight, sword fight. Oof, almost had a dramatic knockout. Cuts her. All right, now we'll... Jump to them. She strikes at him. 
and hits. And then she's going to do a swipe back, two attacks. And hits him again. So, um, that was her. Submachine gun guys. Uh, two of them are going to fire Dr. Wickham. Miss. Hits. Does he evade? He does not. And he goes down. Dr. Wickham is down. All right. So, I believe uh, in Tiny D6, when you go down in combat, you get a test, a regular test to see if you recover or if you're just unconscious. And then if you fail that test, you have to take the, another test in your next round with disadvantage, and then you die if that's the case. You say, save test stable by yourself. Successful taste bring you to one hit points and ends your turn. And if you fail that, you get one last chance with the test. It's right. Exactly right. Okay, so he is down. So we'll see how that plays out. The other guys take a shot at Dr. Stewart. One hits. Oh my gosh, those are heavy weapons. I forgot. Oh my goodness. So she's losing she's losing hit points fast. So those submachine guns are just chewing her up. She's gotta get this, she's gotta get the cover. <laughs> and I think did I make her take the evade action? I can't remember. Let's say I did. So we'll, and she evades one of those, but not the other. So I can't remember. Oh well. For now, heroic. Alright. So I've lost all track of my initiative. So I'm going to say, I'm pretty sure Xander attacked and Dr. Stewart attacked, but I don't think Dr. Wickham did. Or he did, and then he evaded. Let's just roll initiative. All right, so Dr. Wickham is going before. The other two are going after, so remember that. Oh, Dr. Wickham has to make a save test. And he fails. Uh-oh, this could be it for Dr. Wickham. Uh, if he fails his next test with disadvantage, he could be in trouble. Uh, Dr. Stewart is going to go over. Uh, she's going to move over and try to staunch the bleeding. So she is going to make a test to... Uh, she moves and makes a test to stop the bleeding. And she fails. And she makes that one. So... She manages to staunch the majority of his bleeding, but he is down and out for the count. And that was it for her. And so, oh, I had Dr. Big. She was supposed to go after them. So they'll take a couple shots at her. Miss. Hit. But she makes it over, does what she needs to do. And then the third one takes a shot at Xander. And hits for two. And now it's his action. He is going to spend two grip points to gain 1d3. He gains two more hit points. And then he's going to take a swipe at the woman. And almost has a dramatic knockout. And does a backswing. And misses. Ah, so close. So close. Uh, I don't think she swiped at him, so we'll have her swipe. She hits him. And hits him. And... And hits him again. So, things are not looking good for our heroes. We'll see what happens. Japanese agents are pretty tough. Initiative Dr. Wickham is safe from having to make a test. Uh, Xander is going before... Dr. Stewart is going after. Xander takes a swipe at the woman attacking him, and he misses. And his second back swipe, he hits, and she goes down. These three cronies, their leaders are down, but they know that they have a mission to do. And they think they have the advantage, so they're going to continue to fight. Um, so they're going to shoot. Okay, yeah. So Xander attacked the woman, so he's done there. Dr. Stewart's going after. So they're going to take a shot. Miss. Hit. And one shoots at Xander. This could be it for Xander. 
And it is. So he goes down. Submachine guns, man, they're tough. Lots of bullets flying around. Things are not looking good for our heroes. All right, so it's getting tense, folks. It's getting tense. All right, so now she gets to go. Um, she grabs the mirror and runs further into Stonehenge. So her action, grab the mirror, and then further into Stonehenge. So she's running with it. All right. Um, now we'll roll initiative. They go before... Um, they go before Xander. That sucks. They know that the mirror is their main objective, so all three of them take off after the mirror. They're not worried about the fallen... And so they uh, make a move action, and then they take shots at her. But since they're running, I'm going to give them disadvantage. And so each one of these is an attack. One of them hits. And Dr. Stewart goes down. Okay, we're going to save that for her save test. Xander makes a save test. He fails. They grab the mirror. They grab the corpses of their leaders and they make their way out of here. She makes her test, has one hit point. She's groggily uh, getting herself up. And then Xander. I think he needs to make another, he needs to make a test with disadvantage, or he could be dead. Hmm. Well, that's not very pulpy heroic, is it? So, he wakes up in a hospital bed next to Dr. Wickham, and Dr. Stewart's sitting by their bedside and says, I was, they got the mirror. The Japanese government got the mirror. I did what I could, but they escaped. We're lucky to be alive. Yes, Ugh. I am miserable. Everything hurts. So they are in a London hospital. They lost the mirror. And Dr. Wickham says, Well, once we get out of here, we must contact Kurosawa and let him know what has happened. And Dr. Stewart's like, I already have. And I will... But you are hurt. Yes, but I was able to leave and come back to visit. The doctors released me. I just... My arm is in a sling. But I did contact Kurosawa, and he contacted me, or he, he told me that the agents that defeated us and stole the mirror were set upon by Yakuza, and the Yakuza now have the mirror. What would the Yakuza want with the mirror? Well, Kurosawa's not completely convinced that it's the Yakuza. He thinks they are people posing as the Yakuza. He thinks they actually are uh, a organization called the Kusanagi no Tsuguri. They named themselves after a sword that was part of this, this emperor's mirror's trove, and they're trying to collect all of his items. So now it rests with them. What are they going to do with it? Kurosawa's not sure, but he's at least relieved that it's not still in the hands of his government, because his government would probably use it for propaganda purposes. Well, this has been a total... bollocks. Well, forgive my language. I suppose I need some rest. And so Dr. Stewart leans back in her chair, a sling, looking at her two friends as they convalesce and thinking upon sometimes adventures go the way you want them to and sometimes they don't. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the 
or kids or folks or whatever. That was the end of uh, episode four. Uh, kind of, you know, not every mission is going to go the way that you want it to. I mean, obviously, Indiana Jones had the idol stolen from him by Belloc at the beginning of Raiders Lost Ark. Things like this always go on. But hopefully, uh, you forgive me my uh, heroic penchant for Deus Ex Machina, <laughs> saving the uh, heroes from certain death, because, hey, it's pulp, and that's my version of pulp. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story. I hope... Uh, I hope you had as much fun listening and watching as I did playing it. And I'm going to give them each only one experience point. No, you learn from failure as much as you learn from victory. So I'm going to give them their 10 experience points. And then I will have chosen their, their traits uh, before the next mission. Uh, so, well, that's in place. Uh, thank you once again for watching. Thanks again for all the support, all the comments in the com uh, comment section. Uh, they make my day, and I love interacting with you guys about uh, this hobby that we all love. So until next time, keep on rolling dice and playing games. Uh, thanks again, and Magehammer out.